I have absolutely no idea how this video is going to turn out. However, it is time. The Angraecoids are coming out today. I do, however, have a plan, which is pretty straightforward. And then there's a little bit that isn't that straightforward, but I am so up for it. Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope that you're up for it too. Let's get the Angraecoids out, por fin. There they are. Welcome to the great outdoors on Greycom Crestwood, Tomorrow Star, and Sesquipedale Variety Bossery. Right. <laughs> I am very happy to see this. So, we have some grooming to do. And while I do the grooming, I shall be showing you some footage of them as they were in November of 2022, the day I brought them inside. One thing I can show you straight away that I have noticed on my crestwood is this leaf right here this was itty bitty coming growing out in the crown right there so it's made some progress throughout the dark days throughout the months past but i'm hoping now things will speed up i'm also noticing of course the state of the roots even though i do try to maintain their humidity levels i lose some so all these were beautiful, green, long, lush root tips. The root tips of root tips when it comes to orchids. I just love root tips on angraecoids. They just look so emerald green anyway. I call them my kryptonite. So what we need to do is pretty much have a look-see because when I feed these roots back into the hedge, I want to make sure that I can keep them all and then see what happens during the growing season. But this is the first year that they've gotten to this length that I am now probably thinking of cutting them to make my life easier, depending on how my plan works out. But first of all, let's have a look, see, and remove anything that is dead. Shriveled, looking a little bit beastly. Don't want to go too far because here there's a bit of plump, even though it doesn't give way. These roots are like concrete. You see, I cut into some green. So they weren't all gone, but there's still some life in this root right here. This branch looks dead to me all the way back. And if it still has life in it, well, hey ho, so be it but nope, it doesn't have any life in it. So we did okay there. Like I said, if I'm gonna have to forfeit roots, then I'm gonna have to forfeit roots. The orchid has to go back into the hedge because that is how I make sure the root system gets enough humidity in my super dry climate. Right, so we've got very paper thin root right here. I cut back into the green, not intentional, I'm just going by what I'm seeing. I would prefer not to cut into green because I haven't quite figured out when they say that angraecoids hate their roots disturbed, if that includes cutting roots or just breaking them. So here we have another bit that's, huh, it's papery dead. Let me see. See, it's papery dead all the way up to here, up to here as in right here, <laughs> I told you. No idea how this video is gonna go. So I don't wanna cut into the green as mentioned, but here we are. Good, we did well with that one. Here's another one, That's looking pretty dry up to there. Uh, we've got a groove back, same with this one. Now, even though they've been above a little bit of a tub of water and some of them submerged, there's no guarantee when you change the conditions of a root system that they will actually survive. Proof is in the pudding with these roots. So keep going. There's another one here. Yeah, I noticed this one a long time ago. It's like this one was the first one to go. And it's gone all the way up here. You can see that it is a branching root system, even though not vigorously a branching root system, but branching nonetheless. So we'll take advantage of that. 
and hope to be able to conserve as much of it as possible without having to go, you know, chop it by half. I would like to avoid that. And when we get to the hedge, I'm going to explain what has been trying to create a system, a concept that will work because the past four years that I've been doing this, the root system wasn't this long. It was only in the last two years that I got this entire length going on right here. <laughs> Hello, King, back in his spot. And I would like to maintain that. I know there's only so much that I will be able to maintain, but we're going to keep trying the best to our ability for as long as possible. My bossery hasn't lost a single root bar the one that I think has grown in. This one feels firm, but I feel that this one is compromised or the one in the back. Yeah, I can't turn her around right now because <laughs> she's not a branching root system. She just sticks out roots. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, we will see how they progress during this coming growing season. And I hope to remember when I turn her around to show you where I can see compromised roots in the back that unfortunately they grew in 2022. I was hoping to bring them through the winter. That didn't work out. The next thing I want to do is give the leaves a good little wipe down. They've collected quite a multitude of dust. I very rarely dust my leaves when I have my orchids indoors because of my cold temperatures. I do not want to put water on leaves, have cold temperatures, and then, you know, get spotting markings, fungus, or something along those lines. So I also am quite accustomed to a spider family living in here. This is nothing in comparison to what I've had in the past. I think in the year 2122, this whole structure right here was covered in spider webs and they then eventually disappeared. They just make their home for the winter, which I encourage. I'm not like putting out spider food that they come. Please stay on my orchids, but they really do help when it comes to keeping pests a little bit under control. I have not had any pest issues with this orchid while she's indoors, while she's experiencing any kind of nasty conditions that are not to her liking. And I do actually give my spiders credit for that. So they're always welcome, but they're also welcome to come back once the orchid is outside. So I'm destroying any kind of webbing doesn't matter if they want to come back they're welcome to do so not opposed to spiders one bit i also see minimal salt buildup on the orchid top normally i go around and wipe all of that down just as a little precautionary measure but it's not as bad as it had been in past years in past years i've really when i had my artificial lighting on i would just continue to fertilize as aggressively because these are continuous growers just fertilize aggressively no matter the season and then yes i would get salt build up because i wasn't flushing as much i got better with dialing in my fertilizer based on the condition so <laughs> if that's anything to go by so yeah let's just clean her leaves get her all preened and primed because i want to do a garlic alcohol misting just to get her ready, preventative measures for any other kind of pests that might say, oh, hello, welcome back. Last year, she stayed clean with the exception of during the winter when the spike was growing and coming out to bloom, I had a bit of scale on a spur of all things. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. A little bit of garlic alcohol and the situation was dealt with forthwith and there was no return anymore of any scale and we're going to keep it that way so whatever i sprayed then i might be wiping down now but we're going to take care of that very very shortly and i will be doing exactly the same for the bossery so for the sake of the video and not to waste your time take up too much of your time the bossery is so much more easier to deal with less leaves but i do want to show you one thing on the bossery before we move them into the hedge as I remember right now, because I think what's going to come up is going to blow my mind. I'm going to lose concentration as to what I wanted to say. So I'll get the bossery up and we'll talk about 
what I was doing with regards to fertilizing, which is more obvious with the bossery as it is with the crestwood. We can do a comparison so that you can see how I'm trying to keep the momentum going with continuous growth, balancing out the fertilizer, but not getting any radical spacing between each new leaf that grows. Because if I'm giving too much fertilizer and I don't have the light levels, that means my distancing, my spacing will also increase because the orchid is, uh, is using that fertilizer, wants to absorb it, absorbs it, then doesn't have enough light. So the spacing starts to change, creating weak structures. And that is what I'm liking right here. You can see my spacing is even. So while I can't fertilize as aggressively as I would like to, I am fertilizing according to my light levels and conditions and not, not a single leaf looks to be bolting and giving a signal that there was more fertilizer than there was light or warmth and the orchid was reaching. I hope that makes sense. And if that little bit of tidbit of information was helpful, gave you something to think about. Oh, it would be awesome if you would like this video. I would appreciate that. And also if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you are so welcome to do so. I could use all the help I can get. I have a feeling my channel has been shadow banned from the moment I launched it and shadow banned by YouTube because of my location, not because of me doing something wrong against terms of service. So if you wouldn't mind to subscribe, do all the good YouTube thingies that would help a channel get out to a bigger audience. Oh my goodness, I'd be ever so grateful. Thank you so, so much. And with all that being said, here I am now doing what I said I wouldn't waste your time with, but it is so important. Your support is so important to me. It means a lot, it really does. So speaking of pest prevention, I'll finish the bossery afterwards. Garlic alcohol and just giving it a mist. I don't mind if some of it just sort of dissipates onto the root system. Not a problem because as you can see, I have a very light breeze today, nothing major. And everything that flies away is going to evaporate relatively quickly. Now, when we get to the hedge and the orchid will be growing the other way around, we will do the other side as well. Speaking of going to the hedge, here we go. Let's do this. Let me show you what I was thinking of. This part of the patio is called the Deep South simply because it's the southernmost part of my patio. <laughs> so I give a little bit of orientation. Now, I normally clock in at 30% humidity as an average throughout my years. Yes, we're looking at something. I'm going to get to that. But you see the hedge is super important because what I'm going to be doing, if you're new to my channel, is I'm going to be feeding all the long roots into the hedge and that is their source of humidity. It is shaded and when I miss these orchids throughout the growing season, the water and everything else that accumulates in the back is the best environment for the roots. As you could see, they have grown exponentially, something that wouldn't be possible if I didn't have this little corner. Now, the problem this year, which is a great problem to have when an agricoid grows nice long roots, is there's a tension point on the roots that if I have her at the level that used to be right there, this little grating, the roots have now gotten so long that by feeding them in to the hedge and through the fence, there's a tension point and some of the branching is also causing issues. So instead of doing that this year, I have come up with something that may work. It may not. We will see if it does or doesn't together. I have not done a trial run. I've tried to image this in my head over and over again. So what I'm going to do, what you will be seeing, unless I've got some mutterings and some things I need to edit out, which aren't YouTube friendly words, is I'm going to bring in my Crestwood and I'm putting her on this pot right here. I have raised this up for this season because what I'm intending to do is to come in at an angle with the roots and feed them into the fence by using that crate with the pot as her final position for the grow season. So the idea being to save the roots is to come in at an angle as opposed to being lower and trying to get them all in. I don't know if any of that made sense. I don't know if any of this is gonna work. I'm up for it, like I said. 
And if you are too, well, <laughs> let's see if my months of musings and contemplating are going to pay off. Here we go. So let's see where I need to go. I'm kind of targeting my visuals here with how the roots fall naturally. Let's see, maybe I can also feed some in. I've also considered bunching some up, tying them together. That could be an option as well. Another thing I've done is try to get into the hedge as best as possible to clear out anything that could be in my way, stopping the roots from progressing. And if this, I don't like this point of tension here, don't know if I just cracked one. I've heard some cracks, so I don't know where they are. I mean, it's working. But there's a problem right here. These are okay. This one I cracked last season. This one is okay. I mean, it's at an odd angle that I don't like. But if I leave one like a sacrifice, but make sure that the other ones are okay. You know what? <laughs> I'm so tempted to fiddle around a little more because I've just not expected it to be that simple. But it worked. And I think I'm just going to leave her be just like that. Maybe turn her a little bit more facing the light. I can't see where the cracks are. I will find out eventually. I'll see roots declining. Or when we pull her out in November, we'll see what happened. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave it. This worked better than expected. So I'm going to clear this space. And there's just one more thing about this corner that is kind of annoying me a little bit. It's not something that I can change. But this morning, as I was doing my rounds with the orchids, I saw that the neighbor was watering the pots he's got hanging over here and all that water came into this corner and I thought, yeah, no, that's not good. I don't want that toxic water on my angrecoids because that is exactly the same water that I'm getting out of my mains. So what I'm going to have to do is put up a barrier, some kind of a curtain as well, some kind of a cloth barrier. I don't care if it's an old sheet. I do not want that water touching my roots. Okay, let's go and get the bossery. So much easier with these single long roots. You see that growth curvature? Yeah, that's because there's a lot of light behind me with a white reflecting facade. So I'm going to get some of that handy dandy Velcro from Trisha's Orchid Life that she so kindly sent to me and we're going to tie her back. Not that that really makes much difference because in the winter I have the same problem, but in the winter she grows much slower. So let's fix her up. Let's get her tied up against that fence also to protect her from the wind. So, I wonder, were you around when I did this in 2022 and saw how many leaves I was supporting with the Velcro because of the way they grew and were flopping from during the winter, they were weak and stuff. Look, I don't have to do that with her, look. It worked. So I fertilized a lot of calcium nitrate into this orchid, 200 parts per million and exchanged them with water. So maybe twice a month from mid November through to mid and April, I did two times a month, 200 parts per million of calcium nitrate. And then I did 200 parts per million of just normal fertilizer. And also I used a lot of plain water just to keep the dish filled up. Yes, this leaf looks a little bit fragile, but now that the growing season is coming, it's not as bad as what happened last year where I had to support everything. I'm happy, this worked out great. 
Oh, I love this. I think it should be all right. My biggest concern, of course, is wind. Don't want anything flopping over. So what I'm going to do is also bring in another Velcro tie and just support her against the fence for any eventualities. Oh. <laughs> wild thing you make my heart sing you make everything groovy this is awesome what i do enjoy about these orchids is the glaucous effect of their leaves yes wiping the leaves is a problem because that takes away that glaucous effect which is an actual fact protection against the light for the leaf so you don't want to be too mad about it but i only wipe my leaves twice a year Sounds terrible, doesn't it? But you know what? In nature, they don't get wiped. Maybe a little bit of rain, but I do enjoy that glaucous effect. So I'm gonna bring you down. I'm gonna show you the root that I lost on the bossery, which is a pity, because it's the one from 2022. And I got it to grow into the pot really nicely. And yep, it didn't make it. You see that there? It's beautiful, beautiful, healthy root. Grew nicely into the pot. I was overjoyed because these are not bendy at all, but now it is. It's soft and kaputski, but I'm not cutting it off. Whatever is going on in the pot, I don't think it's viable even lower down, but at least it gives a little bit more stability, some kind of stability. It's not completely rotted out, and that's the same for my crestwood. Any roots that don't look viable, that have gone into the pot, let me make sure I don't jiggle you around. You can see here, those aren't viable. They're soft, but they're in the pot and I'm not going to be fussing around trying to remove those either. Fertilized water, about 500 parts per million in here. So I'm gonna match the increase of fertilizer for both my angrecoids to that of what I did with my Phalaenopsis so that I have a bucket and I know all my top guns and big ones that get now 500 parts per million. That includes my Holcoglossum Kimberlianum. Now what I would normally love to have here as well is my Oncidesa sweet sugar. She loves the humidity, she's on a mount. But for the time being, I've got little birds coming around this area. They've been picking the moss off of my Holcoglossum Kimberlianum. I do not want them to destroy that mount. So until they've realized that these are not worms, these are roots, I'm not going to put my little mount here because one day I'll find it somewhere strewn around on the patio and that is far too risky for me. Oh, but you guys, this worked out better than expected. I'm so happy. Now she looks a little bit higher than the bossery, looks a bit bigger. Meanwhile, she is a bigger orchid, but not that big, but it did work. It wasn't as big as a fiddle as it was last year. So this is the way I'm gonna go in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed how this little corner is coming together for the growing season proper. Let me tell you something. I am glad that they are out of my grow space and are out back in the light that they so desperately need and temperatures that are more to their liking. So thank you if you've made it this far. Thank you for liking the video, for subscribing. So appreciate your support. Thank you for watching. Leaves me just with one thing left to say. I wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.